Good Thursday, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with you on this 30th of August, almost to the end of the month. Hard to believe, but September is this close away. As we go ahead into your holiday weekend, usually the, the first celebration of the fall season there, uh, make sure that you're staying up to date with the weather. Weather is changing around the North Slope and some of our northeastern communities, especially those near the Brooks Range or folks traveling into the Brooks Range this weekend, need to stay up to date on the weather changes coming your way. You can do that easily by calling 1-800-472-0391. That's our, our Alaska weather information line. Of course, you can find us online at weather.gov slash Alaska. Now, this is a good site to use from your PC or even your phone, but if you want to try something a little bit more mobile friendly, faster on those low connection speeds, try mobile.weather.gov, M-O-B-I-L-E dot weather.gov, and you'll get a search bar at the top. You can type in your location, hit go, and then save that to your home screen the next time. It'll load up a little bit faster for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me anytime. I'm happy to serve you any way I can. David.Snyder at NOAA.gov. Here we go. Our first red box of the winter season. This is a winter storm warning for the Brooks Range. This is for tomorrow afternoon into Saturday. This is when it's going to snow the most. It'll probably be fairly heavy and generally east of the Dalton Highway. Uh, and it'll probably fall pretty quickly as we head into Friday night. And Saturday, we're talking about four to eight inches for the winter storm warning. But there's another round of snow prior to that. So starting tonight and into tomorrow, we might get about one to three inches of snow, generally along and east of the Dalton Highway, plus the four to eight inches here, plus another round coming in behind it. That's three rounds of snow possible over the pretty much the holiday weekend. On top of that, cold, poor visibility, westerly winds blowing through anywhere from 25 to 35 miles per hour and gusts up to 45 miles per hour. It is going to change uh, conditions here across the Brooks Range very quickly. Now, conditions are already deteriorating in that area. We have some pockets of snow and fog across the North Slope coastlines. But on top of that, there may be some light snow around the Denali Park Road. Uh, because of that, don't be surprised if you are driving up for some late season uh, Denali Park enjoyment or perhaps uh, the, the road lottery there. You want to make sure that uh, you're, you're being prepared for changing conditions there. It looks like they could see one to three inches of snow at some of the higher trains and the passes there. And as you're heading back into the higher country, don't be surprised to pick up about one to three inches of snow there. Now, it probably won't last all weekend, but it certainly could slow you down or perhaps make conditions a little bit uh, not so much fun to drive. So be careful if you're heading into the park road, especially along the back end of the road. Uh, as we head through the weekend. Now up north and to the west, uh, Ukiadvik, uh, Wainwright down toward Point Hope. Westerly winds up to 40 miles per hour. We'll be pushing toward the coastline. There are no warnings or advisories out as of this point. However, conditions are going to be a little rough along the coast and could push the water up to a level that might take things off the beach if you're not prepared for that. So you might want to move things off the beach and be prepared for higher than normal surf in those conditions there. A westerly winds blowing along the Beaufort Sea Coast won't be quite so bad. Uh, this is more of an onshore push for the Chukchi Sea with low pressure working its way along the Beaufort as well. So changing conditions up north, make sure that you and your community are prepared as we go into the weekend. Fire danger, this is about it. Uh, we have some uh, generally elevated areas of dry conditions across the upper Yukon, but that's about it. Fire danger is about zero right now and conditions that are still burning are uh, quickly uh, improving, let's say, across many parts of the state. So you're not going to see a whole lot of fire danger on the map anymore. As we look at the satellite picture this afternoon, you can pick out the overall weather pattern. Look at this northerly push coming through the region, and you'll have to excuse a bad satellite scan that we had today. Uh, as the front is pushing southward, that continues to move that colder air further and further down into the interior. And as we expect, uh, it looks like the front will probably make its way into the interior. The coldest weather, though, stays up north of the Brooks Range, where we have that low pressure system sitting right along the ridgetops. Already today, areas of snow 
and some fog. Here's the second wave getting ready to move in. The warmer air will help generate some of the snow as it squeezes through the atmosphere across the uh, north slope later tonight and into tomorrow. Across southeast, we have low pressure working its way into the uh, uh, the central and eastern Gulf Coast. Behind that, a little bit of drying coming off the land. Low pressure sitting across the bearing with a lot of fog surrounding it as well. Low pressure tonight shows 1,004 millibars on the chart. You'll see that steady west and southwesterly flow moving across the Bering Sea. Pockets of low pressure moving out of the northern Gulf and southeast will keep clouds and rain moving through the region there. A little bit of drying follows each wave, but uh, just as quickly it's reinforced by another round of clouds and rain for many locations. Now, across the Alaska Range and certainly to the north side of that, I wouldn't be surprised to see rain and snow mix. Again, the elevation for that seems to be down around 3,500 feet or so, uh, about 3,000 feet for uh, many locations there in the northeastern Brooks Range. And this is where we're going to see that heavier snow as that next wave moves through. Behind that, another wave sets up, and that could push another round of snow into the higher terrain. But most coastal locations around the Chukchi probably won't be dealing with that uh, frozen winter weather just yet. That really cold air seems to be moving very close to Point Barrow, Ukiavik, uh, eastward Kaktova, Prudhoe Bay, and um, eastward into maybe Arctic Village and probably just north of Fort Yukon. So this is going to be a, a generally north and eastern cold weather experience for you. As you look further southward, it's rain showers for the Talkeetnas and into the Cook Inlet region. Uh, looks like areas of uh, light rain, maybe a little bit of fog for parts of southeast as we head through tonight. Tomorrow, showers expected for many parts of southeast. Notice this broad westerly flow pushing weather across the Gulf and right into southeast once again. Low pressure barely moves across southwestern Alaska. 1,010 millibars expected there for the southwestern Capes and Bristol Bay. Showers continue across the Alaska Range. More clouds and showers, it looks like, for most of the Kenai Peninsula and Prince William Sound. Uh, once again, for the higher terrain and areas up on the plateau, don't be surprised to see rain and snow showers there. Most of that will be higher level, uh, high terrain kind of snow. Uh, the northeastern Brooks Range, though, a pretty good setup for uh, some periods of heavier snowfall starting tomorrow afternoon and into Saturday with that winter storm warning, as much as four to eight inches of snow. Again, that's round two. Uh, this could affect the Dalton Highway if you're driving back or forth. So if uh, you radio ahead and tell folks, uh, check the weather as you go because things will be changing there. And, uh, well, it's just that time of the year. Out across the west, notice how the pressure gradient is kind of packed in a little bit there. We do expect those westerly winds to stay up through a good part of the weekend. Areas of rain and fog to be expected for the Chukchi Coast and a little bit more of a westerly flow, if not an offshore flow, continues for most of the daytime tomorrow for areas around Kaktovik and westward Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse. Notice high pressures building in, not a whole lot going on here, just clouds, stratus, and fog, maybe some drizzle from time to time, but generally speaking, the weather will be a little bit more quiet across the bearing as we head into your Saturday. A little bit of an onshore push into the Alaska Peninsula, and with that, uh, well, areas of low clouds, drizzle, and light rainfall should be possible with that onshore flow, especially with a trough in the vicinity. Across the northern Gulf, 1,014 millibar low just outside of Prince William Sound. That is going to keep clouds banked up against the region. We expect most of the cloud cover to be out around the Wrangell St. Elias region. A lot of this moisture seems to be moving out ahead of the system, so uh, the best chance for rainfall will be across southeast into the Wrangell St. Elias region and certainly up north as we head into the Yukon uh, across the Brooks Range. We expect snow to continue there, especially the north and eastern Brooks Range. The winter storm warning will go. Uh, into early Saturday morning around 7 o'clock. On the west and south side of this front, it looks like it's still going to be fairly warm, or warm enough anyway, for liquid precipitation. So we're not as concerned about a lot of snowfall the further west you go as you head out toward Ambler or Bettles there. Most of this is going to be a rainfall in the region. Areas of fog should be possible, especially in the morning for southwestern Alaska and some of the lower terrain in the valleys there into the Yukon and the Koyukuk. For Norton Sound, look for that onshore flow to continue. The wind should be quite as strong here in Norton Sound as they are a little bit further up the west coast as you head into the Chukchi Sea. Those westerlies again up to about 40 miles per hour as we go through the weekend. So uh, surf conditions might be a little rough and there could be that little extra push of water there, but not quite to a warning or advisory status just yet, but always good to track. As we take a look at your temperatures across the region, yeah, it's cooling down. You can certainly see signs of change there across the eastern Brooks Range. Temperatures tonight across the north coast toward Arctic Village and Anaktivik Pass showing that big dip into the mid to upper 20s for most places there. 32 around Barrow and Ukiavik. Uh, Kotzebue Sound temperatures back in the mid to upper 40s. 39 around Nome. 46 
for uh, Savunga, and about the same there in Gamble. As you head into the upper Kuskokwim, temps there going below 50 degrees now. Southwestern Alaska also in the mid-40s, 48 around St. Paul, Saint, uh, South Central uh, also cooling off into the upper 40s tonight, close to 50 for uh, Kodiak Island. Southeast, you're looking at temperatures in the lower 50s. It's been a breezy day around the Lynn Canal and parts of Stevens Passage. That'll settle down just a little bit tonight. As we head into the daytime tomorrow, notice Kaktovik's only 36. Arctic Village, about 43, about the same there for Anaktuvik Pass. So this area here is where that cold weather is going to sit, and it's going to breed a very good uh, setup there for uh, snow potential. To the west, though, not the case at all. Mid to upper 40s, even 50s across some parts of the upper uh, Kobuk and Noatak Valleys. As you head into the middle Tananaw Valley, we're back in the mid 50s there, all the way out toward North Pole and China Hot Springs. Lower 50s for Eagle, down toward Northway. South Central could nose up on that 60 degree mark again for Homer and Seward. And southeast, back in the upper 50s, all the way up toward Yakutat at 58 degrees. 60 in Kodiak, Bristol Bay temperatures enjoyable, back in the mid 50s. Watch for clouds, though. 55 around Nunavak Island, 53 for St. Paul and St. George, and mid 50s for the Alaska Peninsula and the Aleutian Chain. Won't cool off a whole lot there as we get into Saturday morning. Most of the West Coast won't see a big temperature change as we go into the uh, morning hours there. Low to mid 40s should do the trick for some of the YK Delta and into Norton Sound. You know, look what you're looking at 42. Up toward Nome, 44 degrees, 50 for Kotzebue, 49 for our friends in Shishmaref, 34 around Uthiavik, out toward um, Kaktovik, now Prudhoe Bay, Dead Horse, all in the lower to mid 30s. Looks like for Fort Yukon, about 43 degrees, but just north as you get up to Arctic Village. Again, those temperatures are dropping off. That's right where that snow is going to be falling in the region, so don't be surprised to see uh, a couple inches of snow, certainly above you as you get higher into that terrain. 30s and 40s for most of the Copper River Basin. Gulcana could drop to almost freezing there, so prep for that. Upper 40s and lower 50s for southeast. As you get into your Saturday, the holiday weekend, still cold around Kaktovik. 36 degrees there, mid to upper 50s for many across the interior. South central, close to 60. Southeast, upper 50s, not west, 52 in St. Paul and St. George. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to aviation weather now with a very broad area of low pressure starting out in the Bering Sea but sweeping in and controlling all of southern Alaska and pushing moisture across the Gulf in the southeast. We're going to continue to see plentiful IFR and MVFR conditions, especially for the southern half of Alaska. Up north, though, you've got the colder influence coming off of the Arctic, and that is going to bank you in with IFR conditions probably from the Beaufort through the Chukchi Sea for several mornings, not to mention the potential of snow up across the Brooks Range. Look for MVFR to be fairly widespread across our northern passes, IFR across the coast, and also widespread IFR across southwestern Alaska, especially in the mornings and along some of the higher terrain for southeast and also for the Alaska Range and into the Copper River Valley. As we get into the afternoon on Friday, look for IFR to continue across the north. Some of that will be working its way around the Brooks Range. You can see it kind of working that low deck of clouds and stratus in across the western end of the Brooks Range into the Kobuk and Noatak Valleys. A large part of the interior should be okay. VFR conditions are expected there. Southeast looking for widespread MVFR. Some of that improves, but you may still have some lingering areas of IFR near the capital city and out toward Hyder in the Misty Fjords. Across the central and western bearing, IFR conditions there for St. Matthew, St. Paul, and St. George, all the way into the central chain. And then you'll see some improvements around the Bristol Bay region, but look for IFR here just south of Sand Point and westward Cold Bay and False Pass, uh, and just south and west of Akiak as well. That's your Friday. As we get into Saturday, not a whole lot of change. IFR conditions in the morning kind of advance and spread eastward once again across the Bering. IFR conditions are still pointed in from the northwest to southeast across the coastal plain, from uh, Wainwright to Utkiavik, all the way out toward Kaktovik, Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse, and most of your northern range passes there, but it's also creeping in to the upper Koyukuk now in the Kobuk and Noatak Valleys. IFR could be uh, around the capital city, out toward Gustavus, also around Hyder, and then hit and miss across some of your western passes, uh, perhaps uh, Lake Clark up towards, or I'm sorry, Merrill Pass, and then perhaps up toward Rainy Pass, and then Akiak, and then westward toward Sand Point. As we get into the afternoon, not a whole lot of change out in the west. You'll see some of that IFR pulling back just a little bit more. MVFR conditions continue across the middle Yukon Valley. We'll see some of that creep its way into the middle Tanana Valley. Some minor improvements up north, but IFR lingers across the northern coast into the Kobuk and Noatak. And MVFR conditions continue for a large part of southeast. VFR, though, is uh, fairly uh, prevalent across the Cook Inlet region into most of Bristol Bay 
and across the Copper River Valley. Let's take a look at those past conditions in detail for your Friday flying. MVFR conditions for Anaktuvik and Adigan Pass there, but remember the north side of that is going to be IFR. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass start at IFR. Some improvements are possible throughout the day. Rainy Pass, we expect to see IFR to start. Windy Pass, IFR, and maybe a total improvement to VFR conditions as the day goes on, and that could be true for Isabel Pass as well. Tanita Pass, we expect to see marginal conditions through most of the day, and we would expect Portage Pass to see um, marginal conditions at least through part of the day with VFR conditions throughout the rest of the afternoon. Chilkoot and White Pass also looking for instrument flight rules throughout the start of your morning with marginal conditions later on. The surface freezing line is pushing down toward Anaktuvik Pass and uh, Arctic Village. Below that, the two, four, and 6,000 foot line also being pushed well to the south. You can see the uh, dominating pool of cold air being pushed into mainland Alaska. For central and southern parts of southeast, levels still hold between 8, 10, and 12,000 feet, and the same could be true for parts of the central and eastern chain. But by and large, we're starting to show signs of late summer, early fall kind of weather around here. Freezing levels themselves plus the moisture content are, are a big part of the puzzle and the icing potential here uh, is starting to increase across some parts of the interior. Levels uh, may drop to about 9,000, maybe a little bit below 10,000 feet for the middle Tanana Valley in the interior, perhaps around 8,000 feet and above for northern parts of southeast as that colder air is coming in from the north and west. So what I want you to see really carefully here is to the west on the north slope, above 10,000 feet is certainly possible, but as you get into the Beaufort Sea Coast, levels are dropping to above 4,000 feet, so you may have some icing potential around the Beaufort Sea Coast, especially tomorrow. The jet stream is showing us why that's happening. That northwest wind pushing colder air in on a 70 knot wind. The westerly is coming across the Gulf, anywhere from 50 to 90 knots. A broad north and westerly flow at 9,000 feet, 20 knots in most cases. North slope winds around 40, 40 to 45 across the Gulf. You can see that northwesterly flow pretty much similar at 3,000 feet. Turbulence potential then will be focused on the northwestern mountains below 4,000 feet, some chop in the interior, cook in that region southeast, and also the Aleutian chain, a considerable moderate, will be a little more widespread going into the weekend. Let's go star hopping. Hey there, stargazers. I'm Dean Regis, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Pla Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. We're here to help you find your way around the sky. This week, we're going to share a method for identifying stars in the northern and eastern sky after dark. It's called star hopping, and it's an easy way to go from a constellation you know to other constellations you don't know. So let's get hopping. Okay, we have our sky set up for after sunset any night this week facing north. Let's start off finding a landmark in the sky. Hmm, I guess that would be a sky mark. Anyway, do you see the Big Dipper? Yep, there it is, hanging in the northwest, looking like it's gonna scoop us up. The Big Dipper is one of the easiest things to find in the night sky since it's so distinctive. And it's visible in the sky almost all year. Now, let's start star hopping. We're going to begin by using the two stars on the end of the spoon of the Big Dipper named Merak and Dube. Connect the dots on these two stars and continue that line up and to the right and you'll run smack dab into a star of similar brightness. This is the most famous and important star in the sky, Polaris, aka the North Star. The North Star marks the end of the much fainter Little Dipper or Little Bear constellation Ursa Minor. The entire Little Dipper is almost impossible to make out in a light polluted sky, but at least you know how to hop to it. Now we're going to make another hop. Go from Dube to Polaris and then continue that line to the next equally bright star called Calf. Calf is the star at the top of a W-shaped group of stars marking the queen named Cassiopeia. I know it's really tough to picture these stars as a queen, so just look for the W shape. I picture the stars as Cassiopeia's crown. Oh, I could see that. And did you notice that the hop we made from Dubé to Polaris is the same length as the hop from Polaris to Calf? Aha, that makes it easy for you to tell that you're on the correct star. Now we've turned to face northeast. Polaris is over there, and Calf and Cassiopeia are there. 
And if you continue the line between Polaris and CAF and keep going, it'll run you into another equally bright star. This one is called Alpharetz, and it's a corner to a great square of four stars that mark the body of Pegasus the flying horse. Yep, he's flying upside down. Once again, notice that the distance of each hop is the same, from Polaris to Calf and Calf to Alpharet. So now you can start with something you know, the Big Dipper, and hop to find the Little Dipper, Cassiopeia, and Pegasus. Now let's fly in for a closer look at that flying horse. The great square of Pegasus is great. It takes up a lot of space in the sky. However, there are not many bright stars inside the square. That's another way I often find Pegasus in the sky. I look for a great empty square. There's really lots of stars there. They're just beyond naked eye vision. Let's check out Pegasus's nose star. It's called Enith, and it shines orange red. It's almost the exact color of Betelgeuse, the armpit star of Orion. A star's color also tells us its temperature, and blue means super hot, and red means kind of cool. If by cool you mean 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> yep. Compare that to Algenib over there. That star is at the bottom of the square, and it's 37,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It's blue after all. But back to Enif. Scan just above Pegasus's nose with a telescope, and you'll find a globular cluster of stars called M15. Wow, check that out. You're seeing over 100,000 stars shining at you from over 33,000 light years away. M15 is a hidden gem in the September sky. So try some star hopping tonight. Hop from the Big Dipper to the Little Dipper to Cassiopeia to Pegasus. Then, with a telescope, hop from Pegasus's nose to find M15, an amazing globular cluster. It's all there when you keep, keep looking, looking up. And now, marine weather around Alaska. And time for a quick check of your sea ice edge for this 30th of August. As you'll notice, there's still some higher concentration ice north of Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse and northeast of Utyabik. Uh, most of what you're seeing in the blue zone is marginal ice. That is below about 80% in concentration. Uh, there are some areas that may be on the higher side of that and certainly some areas that could be on the lower side of that as you get west of Utkiavik, and we're still looking at uh, at least generally sea ice free or very close to that, so a lot of open water in the area, so uh, plan accordingly there, but it looks like with a stronger westerly flow, some of this could be on the move a little bit. It has not moved very much despite several weather makers moving over, uh, so it chances are uh, there is something that's kind of a slowing it down, whether it's kind of a, a, a fairly deep uh, chunk of ice or uh, caught up on a shoal or uh, as it goes. So you can certainly check the sea ice edge anytime you like, weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice. Now on to southeast, been a breezy day across some of the central and northern parts of the inside passages there, 15 to 20 knots tomorrow. Uh, not as many gusts expected in the region, three to four foot seas on the inside, a little bit more of a southwesterly flow across the Misty Fjords in the Clarence Strait region. Onshore winds, though, continue all the way from Yakutat down to the Dixon entrance, 20 to 25 knots with 11 to 12 foot seas on the outer coast for your Friday. For Saturday, a little bit of an improvement, less wind for sure. South and southwesterly flow, five to 10 knots, uh, seven to eight foot seas there and light winds on the inside, 10 to 15 knots in most cases and two to three foot seas for your Saturday. For Friday, a northwest wind inside of Prince William Sound up to 15 knots. Looks like two foot seas there. Westerly is coming across the Gulf. The higher seas uh, offshore for sure. Uh, 8 to 11 foot seas expected with uh, about a stronger westerly flow across the southern part of the Cook Inlet. 25 knots with a 5 to 7 foot sea and light southwesterly zone in the upper part of the Cook Inlet. As we get into Saturday, a similar trend, 10 to 15 knots in most areas. But we're still going to see a little bit of a stronger flow crossing the Barrens. 15 to 20 knots with uh, 4 to 5 foot seas in the region and northerlies inside of Prince William Sound down to 2 foot. Two foot seas there expected. For Friday, uh, the Bristol Bay region looking at southwesterlies up to 15 knots, six foot seas. Higher seas as you head down the coast there up to 10 foot seas expected south and east of 
uh, the Pribilofs. Look for stronger southwesterly winds at least for Friday around Kodiak Island, 20 to 25 knots, uh, up to 5 foot seas inside of Shelikov Strait and 7 foot seas down the Pacific coast. Improvement on Saturday, northwesterlies will become a little lighter. Uh, look for 10 to 15 knot winds in the region, 2 foot seas inside of Shelikov Strait, 5 foot seas on the eastern side of the island, and 5 foot seas for most of the rest of the coastline for the Alaska Peninsula on Saturday. Westerly is expected for the Aleutians, northwesterly is in fact for the western chain, 15 knots there, 20 to 25 for the central and eastern part of the chain, anywhere from 8 to 12 foot seas across the Bering Sea uh, coastline and 7 to 8 foot seas for the Pacific as we get into Friday. As you look at Saturday, winds are diminishing here as well. High pressure is building in, so that makes perfect sense. Seas will be a little slower to respond as usual. 5 to 6 foot seas expected for your Saturday. Otherwise, 10 to 15 knots with high pressure located just to the north and west of Kiska and Shemi. You can see kind of the rotating uh, wind pattern here. Uh, all of this stabilizing, but there will be a wealth of clouds and probably some fog to contend with as we go in through the holiday weekend. North and easterly is coming out of Norton Sound. Those should be fairly light. They pick up as you get south of McCorick and Nunavak Island. Northerly is over St. Matthew and the Pribilofs, about 15 to 20 knots. And seas there in the southern bearing are going to be higher. 9 to 11 foot seas are expected. For Saturday, winds diminish across the southern bearing. They're going to be a little stronger, though, around St. Matthew up towards St. Lawrence Island and Norton Sound. Expect west and southwesterlies there pushing onshore at about 20 knots with 3 to 4 foot seas expected, 10 to 15 knots elsewhere, and seas diminishing to about 4 to 5 feet. On the north slope, a strong westerly push coming in, 20 to 25 knots with 5 to 6 foot seas. No warnings or advisories right now, but uh, surf could be up on the higher end. Southwesterlies around the Beaufort Sea coast over the ice uh, and where there is no ice, 3 to 4 foot seas there, 20 to 25 knots. You'll see a little bit more of an easterly flow around Utkiavik. Again, a frontal boundary right here, so this is where all the cold is. And the stronger winds are going to be on the other side of that. West and southwesterlies for the Chukchi coast, 20 to 25, 4 to 6 foot seas there for your Saturday. Recapping tonight's weather, one round of snow is moving in right now. One to three inches of snow may be possible at or above about 3,000 feet and along and east of the Dalton Highway. Tomorrow, as we get into the early morning hours, a winter storm warning starts up uh, in the afternoon, in fact, around 4 o'clock, and 6 to 8 inches of snow may be possible in that region, generally above 3,000 feet, and again, along and east of the Dalton Highway. Uh, there may also be some rain and snow, accumulating snow, but brief amounts there tonight and into tomorrow around the Denali Park region, especially along the Park Road. And rain will continue in southeast, some plenty of clouds out west, and colder up north. Have a good holiday weekend. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.